Hi everyone, my name is Mark DeYoung. In this video, we are going to explore the history of the trombone in jazz. Our story begins in Laplace, Louisiana in 1886 with the birth of Edward Kidd Ory. Ory had a strong interest in music as a youngster, experimenting with homemade instruments. He taught himself to play the banjo and valve trombone, as well as singing in a vocal group before settling on the slide trombone. By the time he moved to New Orleans in 1910, he was strong enough musically to become one of the top band leaders in town, hiring the likes of clarinetist Johnny Dodds, trumpeter Joe King Oliver, soprano saxophonist Sidney Bechet, and of course, Louis Armstrong. After freelancing in Los Angeles for about six years, he returned out east to play and record with Joe Oliver. He re recorded with Armstrong on his Hot 5 and Hot 7 recordings, contributing to the landmark recordings that would change the sound of jazz. In addition to the Armstrong records, Ori was also a key player in recordings made by Jelly Roll Morton, Bessie Smith, and Ma Rainey, and his composition Muskrat Ramble was added to the pantheon of important early jazz tunes. Ori is considered to be the one who codified the tailgate trombone manner of playing, which places as much focus on accompaniment and interaction as actual solo playing. The term tailgate comes from the manner in which bands often played from a horse-drawn wagon, with the trombonist sitting in the back gate facing backwards. In the 1940s, Ori was a key player in the revival of New Orleans-style jazz, performing regularly with the likes of Jimmy Noon and Barney Bigard, and cutting some terrific recordings for the fledgling Crescent Records. I've invited Calgary trombonist Karsten Rubling to demonstrate an excerpt of Kid Ori's tune, Muskrat Ramble. The next trombonist we are going to explore was born in Vernon, Texas in 1905. His name was Jack Teagarden. Teagarden was a self-taught trombonist who developed a specific technique and slide positions in part, according to his brother Charlie, because of his unusually short arms. He played hymns in church and was also exposed to the black spirituals from the revival tent adjacent to his home. He was equally at home on the horn and singing melodies ranging from blues to gospel favorites. By 1921, he was employed by the Houston band Peck Kelly's Bad Boys, and in 1927, he headed to New York where he would frequently sit in with members of Fletcher Henderson's band while jamming in Harlem nightclubs. Next, he became a member of the Ben Pollock Orchestra a group which also included trombonist Glenn Miller, as well as a 19-year-old clarinetist by the name of Benny Goodman. Soon, Teagarden was in the studio, lending his considerable talents to important recordings, including those led by Louis Armstrong, Bix Beiderbecke, Eddie Condon, and Red Nichols. The Great Depression made life challenging for musicians, so Teagarden was happy to find regular employment with the Paul Whiteman Orchestra. In 1939, he formed the Jack Teagarden Orchestra and maintained the group for over eight years before joining Louis Armstrong as a regular member of his All-Stars. With the All-Stars, Teagarden found a perfect musical home and the two of them became renowned for their interactive vocal and instrumental duets. Teagarden was also featured several times in film, including 1951's The Strip, and jazz on a summer's day. Four months after being featured at the 1963 Monterey Jazz Festival, Jack T. Garden died of a heart attack at the age of 58. Joining us again to play a tune that Jack T. Garden often used as a ballad feature, here is Karsten Rubling to play an excerpt of Stardust by Hoagie Carmichael. 